Hey everybody, this is Tom. Welcome to part four of this tutorial series. In the last tutorial, we talked about functions and we played around with a few different functions. We learned that there was a difference between making a function, such as these ones that have a starting curly brace and ending curly brace, and calling a function, which has a name and a list of parameters and then a semicolon. We also talked a little bit about this void word, and that is the the output or the return value of the function. And in the case of setup and draw, we learned that these have no return value. They also take no parameters. And we're gonna get to this more when we start creating our own functions. But for right now, I just need you to understand the difference between creating a function that uses these curly braces and calling a function, which has a name, a list of parameters, and a semicolon. And in the last lesson, we actually called a few other functions. We called rectangle, and we called point, and we called ellipse. And we called background. And if you remember, background was kind of special because we could give it two different list of parameters. If we gave it one parameter, it would mean it's either black for zero, 255 is white, and everything else in between is some shade of gray. If we gave it three parameters, we're talking about RGB values. So this was red and green and blue, and that was how much. So if I gave zero here, that means zero amount of red. 255 means full red. So in this case, I have full red, full green, and then a little bit of blue. All right, so that's really all we did last lesson. And if you notice, these are all call function calls, and you can tell they're function calls because of the name and the parentheses and, once again, the semicolon. And we're actually not going to use any of these today except the ellipse. Okay. So we're just going to do this. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make an ellipse, and I'm going to do 50, 50, 25, and 25. And then I'm going to run it, and I get this ellipse here. Now. You might be wondering if the program starts here, like I said last lesson, and it runs through all of this stuff, why when it gets to here does it start running this stuff? How does it know to go to draw? How does it know to draw this ellipse? And your first instinct might be to say, well, I'm just going down the page, so it would just automatically go to draw, right? Well, that's not actually true. See, you notice here, if I put this even afterwards and I run this, I'm still going to get an ellipse. And that's because it doesn't matter what order I draw in. Processing knows that after setup is done running, once it hits this closed brace, to go ahead and call draw. And draw is special for one reason. And you're going to notice in just a minute when we start moving this ellipse across the screen why it's special. But I'm going to save that for now. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about, though, is how we're going to move this. So I'll put the ellipse back up here. We're only want to, we only want to move it now from the left to the right. So we're going to move it along the x-axis, which means we need to somehow make this value of 50 bigger. So how can I make this value of 50 bigger? Well, your obvious and you might be, I'll just add one to it, right? Well, yeah, that'll work. Well, it still stays pretty much where it is. In fact, it's now at 51x. Okay, so that's not going to work. What we need to use is something called a variable. And in math class and, and stuff like that, you've seen variables. Things like x is equal to 10 or 15. Okay, so there's x. But I can't do this in the world of programming. And in some languages you can, you can just say x is equal to 15, and it will say, hey, you made a number. All right, well, x must be a number. And the reason you can't is because most programming languages, they want you to give a type of variable that you're using. And that's because programs can have many different types. You might be working with, with text, or you might be working with, with strings, or characters, or uh, big numbers or small numbers. You might be even working with with bytes or things like that. So you actually have to define what type of variable you have. So this is actually called declaring. And so I'm going to declare that this variable x is a float. And this is the first type that we're going to look at. 
and you can tell that it's a type that's built in because it has this orange coloring to it okay so it's an orange an orange uh, an orange word uh, there are others but I'm not going to talk about them until later I just want you to focus on what a float is and a float is any number whether a whole number or it could have a decimal so I can see either say 15 or I can say 15.45 or something like that now there is a difference between declaring something and initializing it so notice that I can also do this I've made a float X and I declared it this is declaring because I'm telling the compiler that I, I'm going to use a variable called X and I want it to be a float if I initialize something you're going to see this right here you're gonna see equals to something and you can actually separate these two from each other so I could say float Y and then I could say 100.5 so this line here is declaring this line is initializing and and alternatively you can just do it all in one line there's sometimes you want to do it like this and there's sometimes you want to do it like this either way is okay so I'm actually going to delete the Y we're not going to use the Y right now okay so we have this variable X and we want it to move our ellipse across the screen in some way so what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to make it the same as my X value here and then I'm going to just substitute it in. I'm just going to say x. All right, so that's good. So it still works just the same. I can take the variable and I can plug it in here. And now, because x is equal to 50, then it works just fine. So let's close this. But how do I make it move? Well, I want to add something to x. So there are actually two ways to add something. And let's just move it one pixel at a time. So I can do x is equal to x plus 1. Now you're going to notice two things. One, I put a semicolon at the end of this line, and that's what you do with most lines. And I actually find that this is probably the number one mistake people make when they first learn to code, is they forget to put semicolons on the lines. And that can cause a lot of problems and a lot of weird errors when your code gets much larger. Uh, that the compiler might not know that you're missing a semicolon because of the way you wrote something so it could give you a really bizarre error if you're seeing really weird errors go look for things like missing semicolons or missing missing brackets those are the the two biggest things all right our oh, sorry braces uh, so let's go ahead and look at what happens when I run this if I run this you're gonna see the ball is moving and you're probably thinking two things right now one how does it keep drawing the ball across the screen? Why is just putting x equals x plus 1 right here any different than just saying 50 plus 1? That's, that's really all it is. It's 50 plus 1. Because x is equal to 50, I say 50 plus 1. And then everything on the right side gets put into the left side. So if I started with 50, it'll put 50 plus 1. And now x is equal to 50, 51. But obviously, it's not just equal to 51, it's going to then very quickly be equal to 52 and 53 and 54. Because, as we can see, the ball is moving across the screen. X is equal now, all I don't know, 400 or so, and then eventually it'll be equal to 500, the width of our screen. And then it goes off here, and it's still actually going somewhere off to the side. So, how is that actually happening? And this is the draw loop that is built into processing and this is draw and the draw loop it, it calls the function draw every time it goes through and it's it's more than just a draw loop actually it's the whole program loop and that's actually why this window can stay open this window stays open because in the background there is a loop running and it's called a program loop and every program that you have that's running on your computer has a program loop and they're all just sitting it's sitting there waiting for you to do something with that program but in order to stay open the program needs to keep looping so to keep this window open this there's a, in the background a loop that just keeps going and going and that loop is asking has the user done anything has the user clicked a button has he clicked a screen has he drawn anything anything like that well in processing one special part of it is just redrawing the the stuff in here so everything in here gets called and it gets called anywhere between 
20, 30, 40, 50, 60 times uh, a second, depending on what you set it at. And we'll learn how to set that next time. But right now, I think the default is 24 frames per second. So it's actually calling this 24 times per second. Okay, so this is drawing, 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 drawing. So this is one big loop. All right, so keep in mind that anything you do here is gonna happen over and over and over again. It draws the ellipse, it adds one. It comes back in and it draws another ellipse. And that's why you see these ellipses. They're drawing on top of each other, on top of each other. And if I increase this a little bit, say I make this 10, every time it goes through, the X is gonna move 10 spaces. So if I do this, you're gonna see, doo -doo -doo, see the first one gets drawn here, it moves 10 pixels to the right, and then it draws another circle. And then it moves 10 pixels and draws another circle. And the bigger you make this, the more they're going to be spaced apart. Okay. So the draw, the just this draw function is very special. Setup when it's finished running, the it lets the program loop take control, and the program loop will do this. It will just keep doing the draw function over and over again. Now I'm going to slow this back down to one, and you're going to you're going to wonder something. Well, this is really ugly. Why do I have this coming across the screen? Well, we have a way that we can erase the screen. Remember? It, we, we learned it last time. It's just called background. So if I do the background here, I now get the ball moving across the screen. And it's moving nice, nice and fluid like, and we don't have all of these old balls sitting there. Okay? So what you can do is now you can actually increase or decrease the speed and the ball will not leave the little shadows of itself behind. So let's actually make it slower this time. Now remember I said floating point numbers, these floats, they can be anything with a decimal, so I can actually make this lower. If I make this lower, it's gonna get even slower now. So now notice the ball is moving very, 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 very slowly across the screen. All right, so another thing you might be wondering is why did I write this up here? Why did I put float x up here and not put it inside here? And that's because of something called scope. And I'm just going to write the word here, scope. Okay, so scope is says wherever you create the variable, that's where you can use it. So if I create it up here outside of these two functions, it lets it it lets this draw loop use this. But if I create it Say I create it in setup. I say, all right, well, obviously it's a variable I'm using in my program. Let's just make it part of setup. It's going to say this x is not visible. And what that means is I put it in setup. It can only be used between the two braces of setup. So this is something called function scope. And I'm going to come back and review this next lesson. But for right now, you just need to know if you create it between these two braces, you can only use it between those two braces. So if I create this float here, it's used inside these braces. If I create it outside here, it can be used in everything that's in this file. Any function in this file can access it. All right. Uh, now, so you're saying, all right, well, that's good. Well, I use it in draw. Why not just go ahead and I'll just put it in draw? That makes sense, right? So I have float here, the background, and I'll just add 0.2 each time. Okay, well, your ball's not going to move then. So why doesn't the ball move? Well, the ball doesn't move because every time the draw loop is called, you're declaring and initializing this variable. You're re-declaring it. So every time it goes through, it says, hey, I'll make a variable x. I'll give it the value of 50, and then I'll use it here. It says 50, and then it says x equals x plus 0 0.2. So now it's 50.2. And then the draw loop gets called again, and it says, hey, make a new variable, call it x, make it 50. So it's never going to move. It's always going to be stuck at 50. So what we need to do is put it out here, because this will only let the variable be de declared and created one time. Okay? So this is very important. Putting all variables that you want to use in this file that you want to use throughout the functions, you want to put up here. All right, so I could alternatively just practice there. I could declare it here, and then I could initialize it here. So let's say I do this. All right, so now it's no, it starts a little bit further to the right, or maybe I can even start it even further to the right. 
Okay, so now it's starting all the way over there. All right, uh, so what I'd like you to do is try to create another variable y and then substitute it in here and follow this thing and just kind of play with it. And at the start of the next lesson, I'll do the same and, and you can compare what you did to what I did. Okay, all right, uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next lesson.